In my previous video, I mentioned how I'd restarted my dream project from scratch for the third time, hoping to use everything I've learned in the past few years. First, I made a compass to help orient the player. I kinda just winged it, so please excuse the brute forcing. The script hides and slides around the cardinal points based on the player's rotation using my messy code. While it works well here, once I add in my quest markers, I may need to actually figure out a more elegant algorithm. After that, I started implementing some water and environmental effects. The first thing I needed to do was figure out a system for dynamic rain. On top of a simple rain particle effect, I wanted believable raindrops, and my solution was to use raycasts. I arranged my rays in a grid around the player, and have a script grab a handful of them at random at regular intervals. The raycasts are updated and a raindrop splash effect is placed in the environment at its collision point. It also detects the angle of the surface, removing the ripple effect from surfaces with sharper angles. The density of the rain can be altered on the fly, and by using several particle emitters for the rain instead of just one, I can update the amount of droplets they emit without the player noticing them at each resetting. The only issue with my approach is that my rays are all manually placed, making it hard to change the pattern. It also leads to moments where the player may see the grid the rays are arranged in. For my water shader, I am using a method similar to what I see most of the other Godot and Unity devs using. I have a simple water texture that I have scrolling over itself to create the illusion of tiny ripples. I am not necessarily going for realism, but more for just whatever looks good to me at the time. Instead of using a noise texture, I painted a stylized water texture and after some tweaks, I think it looks pretty good. All the water slashes are a combination of particle effects. While fairly primitive, I think in tandem they create a convincing and stylish look to the water when you move through it. While the wedge particles would probably look better if they were displacing the surface of the water, I think sometimes it's important to stick with what you know, especially on a project of this scope. Lastly, I took a crack at the AI for my fish. I don't really understand nav meshes, but I do have a lot of hours spent making raycast based AI pathfinding. And you know what? It's not too bad. To get their twitchy swimming motion, I have a propulsion script that goes off with a timer. The wait time and power of their thrust is determined by what state they're in. Sometimes they're hungry, or scared, or just bobbing along, minding their own business. You can scare the fish by running near them right now, but I'm going to be adding a lot more behaviors to them once some of the fishing mechanics have been implemented. Well, that's kind of where it's at right now. I'm trying to think of what I plan to do next on my list of to-dos, but honestly, I'm not quite sure. The two big items are, of course, the fishing, and the encumberment and traversal mechanics. I think traversal might need to come before fishing, unfortunately. What I actually want to do is start modeling the flora for the first locale and get the foraging system set up. Well, guess it's time to avoid this headache and work on one of my other games for the next two months. Until next time, take care of yourselves. It's a real bullshit world out there.